Hello everyone, it's Wednesday of Holy Week and day 43 of our blog series from Walter Brueggemann's Reflections for Lent and Easter entitled A Way Other Than Our Own. Today's title is called Drawn Away, Drawn Toward. Now this phrase, as you may expect, appears to be giving us some sort of radical choice, almost in prayer form. It's, it's saying, draw us, Lord, towards you, towards your way of self-giving love. Draw us away from all that isn't love, from the forces of greed, anxiety, fear, brutality. And in this Lent experience of so being drawn towards God and away from the powers of the world, may we come to find that the new life, that is the meaning of Easter. Lent then does become what it should be, the preparation time, the self-discipline of patient waiting on the Lord, and the watchfulness to be ready for his, his coming again from the resurrection. Lent also, I always feel, guards us against complacency, to learn to switch on to new possibilities, but also to be aware that Easter is full of contrasts, a roller coaster ride of emotions, I once called it, I think, best, best dealt with when everything is stripped away in order to focus on Jesus' sacrificial love for us at and on the cross. That amidst the individual pain that he suffered comes a message of hope, grace, mercy and love for the whole world. A message, as Kirsty said yesterday, that is currently very, very sadly being cast aside in many parts of our world. But this is our wake-up call, to be more prayerful, to be more disciples and to be more relational. John chapter 12 verses 31 to 32 says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. So what is this saying? This is the linked um, scripture for today from Brueggemann. Well, these words seem to come as Jesus is speaking to a group in Jerusalem from John's Gospel. And the main point of his discussion, the thrust of his argument, if you like, is his impending death, this hour and this purpose that he refers to for which he has come. And during the conversation, an audible voice from heaven spoke some words in John twelve twenty eight. But some in the crowd, expressing their version of spiritual stubbornness, I suppose, dismissed it as white noise. Jesus, in contrast, explains that the voice was meant for their good, for their benefit, as a means to point them towards his truth. In the most direct sense, Jesus is still speaking of his com coming sacrifice on the cross. That moment is the judgment of sin and the means by which evil will be forever beaten. However, there is a sense in which his words also apply to the idea that he's just presented, that each person is presented with God and must make a decision. Everyone has access to enough proof of God, and those who don't believe or choose not to believe must choose disbelief and take on the judgment themselves. These words come as Jesus is speaking to the group, and his main point about the hour and the purpose for which he has come. This double meaning, in a sense, is supported by the comments Jesus makes in the very next verse. All men are drawn to Christ by the proclamation of his sacrificial death. Not all will actually come, of course, but no one has an excuse for rejecting what God offers, which is forgiveness of sin, endless love and redemption in the form of Jesus Christ himself. After the conversation ends, John's Gospel emphasises that people are rejecting God in spite of the proof, not because there is no proof. The death of Jesus here is signified by his being lifted up from the earth, and it shows, I think, that his death would not be natural but violent and would be public rather than private, and it fitly expresses the mediation he makes between God and between God and men, being lifted up between the heavens and the earth. I think it also points out the death on the cross, as intimated in the next verse, where the if does not suppose that his death or the manner of it were uncertain, because it's all been predicted. It was determined by God, agreed to by Jesus himself, predicted in the scriptures and signified by the prophets, and foretold by Jesus. It was necessary for the glorious salvation of his people, and that's all people of all nations, forgiven at and by the cross. So let this, East, this Lent and this Easter, let Jesus draw us all to himself. May we not draw ourselves away, be, it be discouraged, be frightened, be scared. With all that's going on in the world at the moment, as Kirsty obviously referred to yesterday, we need Jesus' undying love, which did not die on the cross. The cross was not the end, it was the beginning. And may we all enable the mercy of God to reign over us this Easter time and forevermore. Amen. A very happy Easter to you all, and I'll see you after Holy Week. Much love. Bye for now.